Hi, I'm Jamil Ahmed, and I'm a plastic surgeon in Toronto, Canada. It is a great honor for me to contribute this video discussion to plastic and reconstructive surgery. Staying safe during gluteal fat transplantation is an article by Drs. Villanueva, Del Vecchio, Afruz, and Rorick. The demand for buttock augmentation with fat grafting has dramatically increased over the past decade in North America. However, there have been several articles highlighting the potential for mortality following this procedure largely attributable to macro fat embolism. Presumably, the fat embolizes after entering the bloodstream through damaged gluteal vessels which exit the pelvis and enter into the deep surface of the gluteal muscles. In this article, the authors highlight the anatomy of this region and describe technical aspects of the surgery that may make it more efficient and safer. When performing this surgery, it is essential for the plastic surgeon to be very comfortable with the anatomy. The authors highlight the surface markings of the danger zone of the buttocks where the gluteal vessels are located. This is a triangle connecting the posterior superior iliac spine, greater trochanter, and ischial tuberosity. The authors caution against injecting fat into the deep portion of the muscle in the danger zone. The superior and inferior gluteal vessels pass superior and inferior to the piriformis muscle respectively and go on to enter the gluteus maximus muscle on its deep surface where the diameter of the vessels can be quite large. The authors highlight their approach to large volume fat transplantation using SST or simultaneous separation into mesins to infiltrate wetting solution while separating fat and EVL or expansion vibration lipofilling to inject fat. In my experience using the concepts and instrumentation described by the authors, I can appreciate the benefits with regards to not only patient safety, but also efficiency in performing this surgery. When I transitioned from using syringes to an EVL system to inject large volume fat, I noticed that it was possible to inject larger volumes of fat into the buttocks so much that I now find it unnecessary to inject fat into the gluteal muscles to achieve an appropriate result in most patients. Instead, it is possible to perform this procedure in many patients using only subcutaneous injections of fat. Given the current hypothesis that macro fat embolism occurs when fat inadvertently enters the bloodstream through the gluteal vessels, avoiding fat injections into the muscle likely significantly decreases the possibility of this disastrous complication. The authors should be congratulated on their article highlighting their strategies and systems to make gluteal fat transplantation surgery safe and efficient. With these innovations that are leading to better results and increasing awareness of the risk associated with this procedure, we have to question whether it is really necessary to inject fat into the gluteal muscles or is subcutaneous injection suffice in most patients.